What's going on guys? Today I'm going to be covering some uh, basic techniques that we as technicians use to find LP or propane leaks in your RV and how you can do those same tests with a very inexpensive tool and a little bit of know-how. Um, LP leaks, though they're not super common in RVs, I'm not going to say it's something that we're diagnosing every day. It's definitely something you want to be weary of and having a tool as little as $50 and a little bit of know-how how to do a simple test can give you that peace of mind knowing that you're leak free and that you don't even have any minuscule leaks. Though propane does have a smell, um, not naturally, propane in its natural form has no scent. They add ethyl marcaptan to the propane to give it the smell so that you can detect leaks. Um, Smaller leaks, you, you can't always smell them, especially if you had a lot of cross breeze going through the coach or anything, you may not smell those leaks. So this will tell you even if you have the most minuscule leak. Um, there's a few ways you can do the test. I am gonna cover a few different options because they're not the same in every coach. The principle of the test itself is the same. So we're gonna cover that. We're gonna cover a leak down test, a regular lockup test. Um, and then I'm gonna show you guys a bubble test too if you guys aren't familiar with that. So let's get into it. First things first, you're gonna start this test with the propane in the coach on. And then for most of you guys, you're gonna be looking for your stove. Uh, most coaches, especially with a standard RV stove, you're gonna be able to do the test from the stove. Not all of them though. You get into some newer coaches with the fancier stoves in them. They don't have removable tops. They don't have LP test ports. Um, so we'll go over the most simple and most common test first, which is right here at the stove. So you'll start by removing your grate. Sometimes you'll have multiple grates. And then most of the tops come off the same way. You may find you have two screws back here. Most of the time they're not in there. And then you're simply gonna pull back on it like that and the top will lift away. Which leaves you with the internals of the stove. Now on this Furion stove, we have something that not all stoves have. And that is a test port, which is right here. You remove this screw and it is just an open hole into the propane line so that you can test from here. Now, again, not every coach is going to have that. So I'll also cover uh, the more common way, which would be going directly to a burner. Um, before we even get into the test though, we have the system on, propane is on, system is pressurized. Um, once we get our meter hooked up, I'm gonna shut the propane off. So for right now, you still want the propane on. and we're just gonna remove these two screws on this burner. You may only have one screw on the burner towards the back. They're all gonna change, but 90% of these burners on this style of RV range top are going to come off the same way. So now that we have those screws out, just going to remove the burner and now you'll have access to the orifice here now on this particular stove because we have a gas test port the shape of this does not allow the manometer um, which is our test device to slip onto here very easily so i am going to be going from here and not here but i am going to show you the process of going off of here as well so for this test i am going to be removing this screw here and since this system is pressurized you will hear the propane come out of here. Maybe not because I have my chest mic on and the manometer is going to connect to that. And then we are going to read 13.0506. We're gonna call it 13 inches of water column. You don't want it to be anything above 14.3. This is your first test. This is a lockup test. This is showing that the regulator is locking up at about 13.1 inches of water column, which is great. Again, you don't want to have any more than 14.3. That is too much propane for the system and you have an issue with the regulator. You also don't want it to be significantly low. If this only reads five, you have another issue. You either don't have any propane, it's not on, or you have uh, a bad regulator. So we've already done our first test, which is a lockup test and verify that the regulator is good. Now we're gonna go shut the propane off. Propane is off. This is the remaining pressure that's locked in the system. And what we're gonna do now is we're actually going to access one of these gas valves. The reason we wanna access one of these valves is to bleed off excessive pressure. We wanna get it down to about eight inches of water column. 
And when you open it, you're going to notice at first it kind of stays the same, not much change, and then it will start dropping drastically. So be ready to close that valve over here. In other words, be ready to turn that burner off so you can stop it at about eight inches of water column. That's pretty much where you want your test. It doesn't need to be exact, but that's where you want it is eight inches of water column. You're going to notice that it takes a little while. It kind of sits there bleeding off that pressure. And then again, it's going to start dropping drastically after that. And there that is. So I went a little below eight, which is fine. We're going to have some more LP expand in the lines. Um, and it's going to continue to do that. Propane does expand, especially if you're going between temperatures and things like that. Um, so we'll try and get it as close to eight as possible. I'll bleed a little bit more off there. I went all the way down to six, but as you can see, we're going to climb right back up as long as I can get back near seven, eight. Again, doesn't need to be perfect, but that's about where you want it. So I got it to settle down right there, 7.9, 7.2. Um, we're going to stay right there and then we're going to start a stopwatch for three minutes and make sure that we don't have any drops in pressure. It may drop one or two hundreds or thousands, um, depending on what kind of gauge you have, uh, where you can see those fine numbers. It may drop a little bit, but really it's what you, you don't want to drop to seven, six, five, any of those. Those are going to indicate a leak in the system. So we'll let this go for three minutes and see where we're at. All right, we're at the three minute mark. And as you can see, we actually went up here a little bit, um, which is fine. Again, propane is going to expand slightly uh, with temperature variations. This coach came in from out in the cold and came into a warmer shop. So things are going to start expanding. It's you don't want to see the drastic drops. You also wouldn't necessarily want to see it go all the way back up to 14 because that may indicate that you have a valve issue on your propane tank or cylinder. But that's it. We have verified that this system holds pressure and we do not have any significant leaks in the system. After that, one more test you can do on the note of valves being bad is you can open a valve and completely bleed that out. And when it gets to zero, let it sit there for another 10, 15 seconds again as things expand. Shut that valve off on the stove and then let this sit for another three minutes and see if we climb up back to three, four, five, or anything above fractional numbers because that would indicate again that you have a bad valve on your propane tank or cylinder that's allowing propane to get into the system even when you have those valves closed. Those of you, for those of you who do not have this fancy test port right here, the other way you can do it, which is the more common method, would be connecting it to where we removed this burner from. You're going to connect it onto that orifice there, open the corresponding valve, and then do the same exact thing, bleeding pressure out on an opposite burner. Pretty much just treat this burner orifice just like you would that test port. So you're gonna connect your manometer there and do it that way. And on these stoves that do have the test port, I wouldn't try and do that because the way they shape this orifice, it doesn't like to take the uh, adapter very well for doing the drop test. And now for the bubble test that we talked about earlier, which is done with a simple gas leak detector solution, which fun fact is just soapy water, which is exactly what you can use. And where you want to use this test is on any propane connections or fittings that you have removed, whether it be you're servicing something, replacing a water heater, or even doing a leak down test. And it's as simple as spraying the soapy solution onto the fitting that you removed. And what you're going to look for is big bubbles blowing out. Um, because if propane were leaking and you had the soapy solution, you would see some sizable bubbles coming off of it. Now obviously you will have some bubbles because it's a soapy solution, but what you're looking for is large bubbles, almost like when you were blowing bubbles as a kid. So that is how simple a bubble test is. You can even do that when you don't disconnect things. If you suspect a fitting, such as the fitting on the stove, say you were to replace your stove and you replace this, you can check that or you can check it just to be safe. Um, but the leak down test would have told you if you had an issue with that fitting. Now, in the case that you were to find a leak in uh, this leak down test, uh, the bubble solution is another way that you may be able to find that leak. You can go around to all your fittings and connections around the coach, spray them and look for the bubbles. This is usually one of the first tests I do before I start getting a gas sniffer out or anything like that, trying to find any kind of loose fittings. Now, as far as the tool goes, the manometer itself, which is how we're testing this pressure, you don't need a fancy one like this. If you're just wanting to check them, um, 
I'm, I think I'm the actual only tech in this building who has one of these, and that's because I got a good marketplace deal. The only thing you're going to need is a standard manometer, which you can even get on Amazon pretty cheap. They're all really the same, and it's the same thing. It's just an analog dial with a tube on the end of it. Same thing as my digital one, just not as fancy. One of these can be had for like 40 or 50 bucks, I think. So again, really cheap insurance, 40 or 50 bucks. You know how to do the test now and you can check for leaks yourself. And the very last part of this video is going to be, what do you do if your stove like this one uh, isn't like this one and you can't connect to it the same way? Well, you can get uh, a nipple fitting and uh, put an adapter on it from the hardware store so that it fits on the end of a propane fitting, disconnect a propane fitting and do it that way. Um, a lot of techs will have something built up like this. This is going to connect to the outside quick connect for the propane, like for your grill. And then my manometer would attach to this end. And if I wanted to do what's called a flow test, which would simulate 50% of the uh, complete load, I actually have an orifice drilled out to that exact size on this side. Probably a little advanced if this isn't something you're already used to doing or trying to build this. Um, you can find build sheets for things like this online as well. The main thing for you would be to have that quick connect fitting to go into your propane line and then have some kind of nipple on the end of it like that just to connect your manometer. And then you have to do the same thing bleeding off pressure from your stove. So while this is not necessary for every test, though the quick connect fitting may be, uh, a manometer is. And again, you don't need a fancy one. You can go pick up one of these $50 guys from Amazon and it's gonna do just fine. Again, this is probably what most people actually use. And again, if you're looking for more tips, tricks, and tours, and RVs like this beautiful Wildwood right here, make sure you guys press that subscribe button.